Bid, uh, first off, uh, thanks for coming to the House Republican Press Availability. Uh, today is uh, day 66. We have, if my math's correct, about 24 days left uh, to get our business done. As most of you know, we've been dealing with the budget uh, on the floor for the last, um, I don't know, I think it's going to be about 18 days uh, by the time we get the budget across the floor. A uh, number of other issues that are out there. We've got uh, oil taxes and income tax up in finance. We've got other bills in other committees. And uh, today I'd like to introduce uh, Representative Pruitt, Representative Johnson, and Representative Birch are here today to try to answer the questions that uh, you guys may propose to us. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Representative Pruitt, and we can start there and kind of move uh, move down the way to get the questions. Yeah, Lance. Right. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Representative Chenault. So I know some of you, of course, have I've talked to already a little bit, but I just want to uh, kind of expound. Yesterday we had the opportunity to, to introduce HB 192, uh, which uh, I'm, I'm really excited about. I'm excited about because of the fact that it, it offers another uh, opportunity for discussion in this conversation. Um, one of the things that I was recognizing as, as things were going th through the process is that it seemed like there was a whole group of people that were expressing some of their concerns, and they weren't necessarily being. They, I, I think they felt that they weren't being heard. And while I didn't, I didn't offer something that exactly mirrored what their concerns were. What I did is I said we need to try to address the concerns of the people on the various sides of this, and let's try to come up with a compromise that we uh, could probably put out there and allow for part of a discussion. Um, there's, there, I know that I've had. I want to make it very clear that this was, uh, this was actually not a minority bill. There was, there's, there's definitely quite a few minority members on it, but this was not from the whole minority. And this wasn't to go contrary to what the Senate has put out. Um, I think we're we're all aligned in recognizing we need to do something. But I also wanted to ensure that there was, uh, that there's a, a discussion about the overarching uh, concerns of a group of people. And I and I and I and I have to, I'll, I'll throw out there. The Matsu Valley is 100,000 people, and, and their representation here, sometimes if, I, I was feeling on this issue that they might not have actually been heard, that they have some concerns. And so I felt that we couldn't just push that group of Alaskans and set them to the side. How do we kind of find something that brings in the middle that, that compromise? And, and even though uh, some of them haven't decided to sign off on this, I think this is closer to a discussion that maybe we can have a conversation with more Alaskans involved. And, and if we're not careful, we're going to have a discussion with more Alaskans because a referendum is going to come. If we, it, if we decide to go too far in one direction, then we're going to find ourselves back in the spot we are right here because Alaskans are going to tell us that you did, you, 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 we disagree with what you did. And I think if we work instead to come to a compromise, then we won't have to go through the pain and suffering that is that. It's their right, and I'm, I don't have a problem with their right. But I don't think that we should get to that point where we should get to that, to that situation. And so that's why I worked hard to try to come up with this compromise. And I'm really excited about having it out there. And like I said, it's a discussion point. It's a starting point. And um, I, you'll, you'll notice that there's a lot of similarities to some of the other things that are out there. And that was done uh, for a reason, uh, because I think we've all got uh, a, a piece in this whole discussion. Jennifer? Hi, thank you. Um, I first of all want to commend Representative Pruitt and the work he did on House Bill 192. Um, there's some aspects of it that I probably wouldn't have done myself, but as you know, this is always a matter of compromise and trying to get something that goes forward that is, is a positive step, and I think he's done that. One of the parts that I like about it is he has continued to, to have a spending cap, but he's also spread out how we get to a spending cap over a longer period of time. And one of the reasons I came or ran for office was I felt that in the times of less money, we have many, many opportunities in this state. And I really want to be part of a body that can discuss and work these opportunities and how we, how we as a government um, do things more innovatively and and better. Um, we have a lot of, lot of technology out there now. We have a lot of, of approaches that we've been doing things the same way for 40, sometimes 100 years. 
and I think we can we can improve on that. And these are the times that give us the opportunity as a government to do that and ask those questions. But it doesn't do it with a slam dunk, cut, 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 with no sculpture or no thought into it. And I think Ms. Representative Pruitt is allowed for more of that discussion. Thank you. Chris. Good morning. Pleased to uh, to be here this morning. Uh, you know we've had, we've had uh, it's it's for a, a first timer for a freshman uh, six day sixty six we're two thirds of the way through the session. Uh, I was amazed at the uh, uh, the amount of time that we ended up uh, uh, putting in the budget. The single most important document that we produce here. Uh, certainly, uh, it, it's it's not the way uh, some of us would like to see it, but uh, it has given us an opportunity now to move on to a number of uh, different issues. I, I I'm uh, pleased to serve on the House Resources uh, Committee, which is dealing with, uh, among other things, uh, uh, oil and gas taxes, uh, on state affairs, and uh, on uh, uh, labor and commerce. Uh, we've had a, a range of issues. Uh, I've kind of cleared the decks here with uh, some of the uh, larger matters, and uh, we're dealing with. We got confirmation hearings coming up. Uh, we're we're going to be uh, uh, moving on uh, Uber, uh, the uh, TNCs, transportation network uh, uh, companies. Uh, will be. Uh, discussing that tomorrow so we got a, a number of issues we're hoping to get uh, get out the door here in the next month but uh, first and foremost I think is is the focus on on resolving the budget concerns and and trying to get a, a responsible budget uh, pulled together that uh, fairly treats the the people and the constituents our constituents uh, here in the state thank you sir and with that uh, open up the floor to questions if you would uh, name an affiliation uh, Austin. Austin Baird from KTUU. Uh, the Senate Finance Committee can't take up House Bill 57 until a reconsideration vote is passed, and the majority says they're holding off in part because the minority leader is out of town. I, I wonder if you could maybe just speak to why, I guess, why hold that vote up and uh, when, when you hope that gets through. And, and Austin, thanks for your question. Uh, Yesterday morning, as you know, uh, we uh, asked for reconsideration on our vote on Monday. Uh, <clears throat> first session was yesterday. Uh, before the session started, uh, I was asked if I was going to reconsider the vote. I told the speaker and the majority leader that no, that we weren't going to reconsider the vote. So it was their choice to, f at first, delay until Friday. And then, uh, for whatever reason, they decided to delay till Monday. Uh, they had 22 votes on the floor. That's all they need to uh, move that bill. And uh, I was kind of, I won't say shocked, but I, it was interesting that uh, we delayed until Monday to send that bill over to the other side. Liz Rains with KTVA. The minority voted against the effective date uh, in CBR sweeps provision in the, in the budget. Um, and what, what's the effect of doing that? Uh, well, right now there's really no effect of doing that. It has an effective date failed and a, and a CBR draw fail. And uh, if that bill moves to the other side, uh, there's many different ways and opportunities to send a bill back that has an effective date and has a CBR draw attached to it. Will the minority can reconsider their vote on those provisions uh, to prevent a, a possible government shutdown in the future? You know, I've. I haven't talked to all of my members, uh, but the ones I have talked to, there's, uh, there's no interest in shutting down government. Uh, I think it's just a way to uh, uh, still be considered into the, into the process of the uh, operating budget and make sure that some of our concerns are dealt with uh, as the bill continues to go through the process. Good morning, Matt Hers with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, <clears throat> for Representative Birch, um, what do you? What's your opinion on the real ID legislation that's in uh, state affairs? You know, we've had uh, a fair amount of discussion uh, with that. I, th I think the governor has, has come up with uh, what appears to be a reasonable proposal vis-a-vis uh, -vis the opportunity to uh, uh, either have an existing driver's license or move into the real ID world. Uh, but there's been a lot of pushback, a lot of pushback and concern about a centralized database and, and what that might amount to. Uh, most recently, we had testimony regarding uh, the use of passports and the fact that uh, a passport is uh, uh, 
currently as it currently exists uh, does everything that the real ID uh, would do and so uh, you know I think there's a lot of uh, uh, interest in how viable that might be and uh, uh, providing a, a bridge if you will to that uh, transportation requirement are you going to support the bill in its current form you know, it's a it's a good question. Uh, we're still taking uh, testimony and uh, and in debate. I think from the standpoint of of uh, you know, I, I like what the governor's proposed. The the fact that you uh, would not have to have a driver's license that you could uh, or a real ID that you could uh, uh, continue uh, use of a driver's license. Uh, one of the concerns I have is that uh, people that are are uh, uh, don't want to have their data and information shared uh, uh, widely, you know, uh, publicly, if you will, across the, uh, the state uh, borders. Uh, but the, the, the passport, I, th I think, might be a viable option for many. So is that a undecided still? Or I, yeah, I'd say so at this point. Thank you. Uh, James Brooks from the Juno Empire. Representative Pruitt, I asked uh, Senator Wilikowski this question after he brought up the idea of a referendum during a floor debate. Uh, Will you be supporting a referendum if you don't get what you want out of the budget process this year? Uh, you know, actually, I, I'd probably say that no, I wouldn't actually go and sign that. But I don't think we need to get to that point, if that makes sense. That's my concern here, is that why do we need to go through all of that? Instead of making, you know, the appropriate managing the expectations and the, the adjustments. Um, that's why I offered this up, is I recognize that, they, that the referendum's coming. And I, and I highlighted earlier, uh, the, the Matsu Valley, if you noticed on the, uh, in the other body, and, you know, and if you've talked to some of our members on our side, I think there's a concern, and they're speaking for a group of people, right? We can't discount that. And even though I may not necessarily sign on to a referendum, I don't know that we need to put ourselves through that. And so why can't we just come together and work on something that really speaks as a compromise for Alaskans? They want us to compromise on this. They don't want, I don't think they want us to get into uh, something where there has to be this fight that comes in in the end. And so that's why I offered this up. It doesn't meet everyone's Every, no one's going to be happy with everything they wanted, but it is definitely a compromise, and I think that's what they can be. Um, I, I think that's what will uh, help make sure that Alaskans are, are uh, a part of this, and, and we don't have to get into that, potentially into that referendum. Um, Nat Hers with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, on the effective date question, um, do you guys really want to make that a potential mechanism for sort of leverage over the budget process? And would that, you know, it, it, it sounds, it, from what I've heard, it, it, that's not a provision that's ever been used before to sort of either hold up or negotiate on the budget. Um, would that introduce a new sort of level of sort of gridlock and dysfunction into this process that, you know, could cause problems into the future? Well, it's it's you know I haven't went back and researched it uh, whether it's been used in the operating budget before I can't tell you that uh, it's been used in numerous pieces of legislation though over time that effective dates have failed and that legislation after you've went through the whole process that uh, the effective date still was not approved and and a piece of legislation went into effect 90 days after the governor signed it uh, this is just a, a way to make sure that the minority's versus voice is heard. And uh, as I said, at the end of the day, I don't believe there's uh, anyone that I've talked to in my caucus that wants to see uh, government actually shut down on July 1st. So uh, uh, whether, whether you want to use that as a, as a trigger or the three-quarter vote,